Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Um, hopefully you guys have been enjoying this build so far. It's definitely fairly unique for us in a sense that not only do we have a building coming out of a building with an opposite perpendicular roof line, but also we've got all these porch details that are kind of protruding and wrapping around the corner. So there's so much detail here and I do believe as this build series progresses, there's gonna be some awesome content. So make sure if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, share the video with your friends and family that might be interested in a building like this or doing work in the future, or hey, maybe they just enjoy construction in general and they might enjoy this series. So definitely appreciate it and uh, let's get into this. I am here by myself today because it's actually the day after a holiday, 4th of July, and the guys took off and that's cool. I probably should be off also. So my goal today, while it's just me, is to do a little prep work, do a little planning so that when the guys show back up, we can uh, be, you know, somewhat efficient and uh, not be standing around trying to, you know, scratch our heads and figure out what we're doing. I'm gonna get all these window frames installed first and then might do a little bit of prep work on the wall framing before the house wrap goes in. Got all these windows framed. This was the tricky one right here just because it's really close to the porch roof and I think it's still far enough away. That two by 12 is actually above the roof line. That's there for um, not really structure as much as just a big space to tack all my flashings to, to screw my steel to coming down that sidewall uh, or that end wall steel. So it's not gonna be that close. It'll be at least a foot away from the roof, which I like to stay off of roof lines for splashing of water and whatnot. But anyway, I, uh, I wanted to say though, you know, when you're doing these windows like this and you're putting one window stacked above the other, it is super important on a steel building specifically, I feel, to make sure that those windows are perfectly aligned. And I say that because you gotta think about this. And I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna walk over so you can see a little bit better. But what I'm talking about is when you've got windows lined up with each other and you can look straight up those ribs, the lines on the steel, if those windows are not perfectly in line with each other, I can promise you some people are gonna notice, they're gonna pick it out right away. So what I try to do is, and I'll show you, people are gonna be able to pay attention to how parallel they are to the window compared to the window up above. So when you're looking at the window here, and then once you look up, it's gotta be in line with that window up there because otherwise you'll be able to see the difference on that rib that goes right up the side of the window. So let me show you what I did in order to ensure that we were basically making these um, as perfect as possible one to another. So right here, I've got my Stabila, uh, this is the 300G, and it basically puts out a plumb bob line up and down, and then it also does a, it's a you know cross line laser, so it does a horizontal line and a vertical line, and it's a self leveler, so it's really nice, you can just set it up, and it's going to level itself. Well, down on the low side of the windows, we've got this center line for the window jam, so this is right in the center of the box, and that's how we know where to put it because we lay out the building here on our girts and screw our box right where we want it. Well, what I do is I take a board, a straight edge, whatever, I line it up on that line, then I take my line plumb bob laser and I'll move that plumb bob out till it just barely is going down the outside face of this board, which means it's gonna put a line right in the center of my window up top. So now then what I do is I go up top and way up there on that top header, I'll put my square, I'll just slide it on that header left to right till I find that laser coming from down here, make a mark and I know when I install the upper window centered on that mark, it's gonna be perfectly centered uh, and plumb from top to bottom with the down low window. So, you know, I used to take a level, I'd uh, measure off the side of the building the same distance, but you gotta remember these buildings, as good as they look, as good as we try, to be perfect, uh, lumber is not perfect. So there will be eighth inch, quarter inch variances here and there. And this kind of takes all that out. 
so that when we're running our steel plumb and we go to cut the bot the piece for this bottom window, the top window should have the exact same dimension. All right, you ready? Yep. Swing around. Set it right in here. Perfect. So now that we got the truss up, what I've done here is this is actually a scrap board and it's gonna define the overhang. This is 22 and a half. So when we come and put our sub fascia on it, it's gonna make a two foot overhang. And now what I'm doing is I did the math on the angle and at 11 and 1 16th from my two foot mark, I should be uh, the outside point of my trim detail. So what I'm doing right now is looking to snap a line so that I can install my connection trim on the wall so that we can put steel up and over this without actually having any of this built because once we build the structure, we lose the ability to go up here with our scissor lift and either I gotta bring in a boom lift or work off of the forks of a telehandler or something like that and I don't wanna do that. So that's what we're doing now is I'm, I'm gonna get that trim detail installed. For this trim detail, I need my inch bend. Here, flip it over for me. You get a nice little, you get a nice little bend here. This trim feels stiff. Okay, so this is basically bent. Now what I got to do, Greg, is I got to hit a 412 right here. Zach, Emily, and I went to get, get some McDonald's, and there's two chickens in the McDonald's drive-thru. Live chickens just roaming around McDonald's, like the parking lot. That's crazy. Wow. Huh. All right, so now if I did my job here, what I've got to do is go past this right here. Actually, Greg, go uphill. Yeah. Let's see. We're going to be five and a half plus five eighths will be plus... I better just do this math, man. I don't want to ruin it. Five and a half plus five eight sheeting plus seven eighths. Seven inch run, four inch pitch diagonal. Seven and three eighths. So, right here, seven and three eighths. That's where my trim is going to intersect. Yeah, I, I'm good there. That's inch and a half. Yeah, then you should be good. All right, Cole, here's what you're going to do, man. I'm going oh to give you my chalk line. Mm -hmm. And you see this little crow's foot? This is called crow's foot. I'm going to pull, you're going to pull the string line through it so that it goes right through that guy. Okay? Mm -hmm. Wrap it around your finger. There you go. So I'm gonna do this now. You're gonna pull it super tight and you're gonna go right through that crow's foot. Pull it super tight and put it right on the wall. See, pull tight. Tell me when you like it. I like it. There, now you got a nice string line you can trip over. So tight and... There. So when I say pull through it, yes. what I mean is you're not gonna go right on the mark, you're gonna go past it. That way you're not... Um, see, now look at it there, see? See how you're through it? So if you were to put your hand right here, it would have been really hard. The line would have stopped. Now I know it goes all the way through. Okay. All right. Okay. Now I need to do the math. Left, wait, baby! Okay. <laughs> now I gotta do more math. All right. 
Here you go. Now it's obviously a lot harder when there's really nothing here yet to put your trims on. If the roof was there, the steel was there, we'd basically just kind of plane it in, get our measurements for our top leg of our trim, the back leg, and go to town. But none of that's really here. We're gonna have our purlins on top of the truss, then we're gonna have our sheeting, then we're gonna have our steel, then we've gotta consider the dimension of the back leg. And so right up here, all this is coming together and we've got the, the, the roof that's flat dying into a valley that goes to this pavilion that's a little bit taller. So I'm trying to get that intersection figured out so that I can make sure all of my trims are right because once we install our upper steel over top of those trims, I don't want to have to take it back off if I messed up. I wonder if people, Good. like, when they tear down some of the buildings that you made, they're we gonna, like, see had the house wrap. Tour. Yeah, they'll, they'll be like, oh my God, the legendary RR building. Yeah, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Jeez. Like, I'm saying that, like, people are gonna, like, be tearing down buildings. Do you want to snap that line? Find, like, priceless artifacts and, like, old buildings. They're gonna see that house wrap and they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, all our buildings built, built this building. Then they'll start searching the grounds for yeah. any loose artifacts that we may have dropped, like, like, like water bottles, pencils. Shirts when we rip them off. Yep. Okay, that's our trim. Look at that. Even hit this mark that I just plotted out. So we're money, dude. Nice. Okay. That's yeah. wrap. No. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Wait, you go ahead and get yours where you like it, or do you want to put one in the middle? That's me say, yeah, you do, Greg. Man, looking good, looking good. Nice one, Greg. So now this is the transition trim for the top of our flat roof that's coming off here. And we'll continue this right into where the valley is. And that's where a transition is gonna take place between the pitch break to the universal sidewall flashing. And I'll show you that. This is a universal sidewall flashing. And it's just a 90 with a little kick out to go over your rib on your roof. And what I'm gonna do is it's coming up to the peak as you can see, and I've got my line snapped and then it's gonna go downhill again, and then it's gonna meet this transition over here where the roof is flat, where that valley is. So I'm gonna go ahead, and first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to notch back the bottom trim so that I can slide the top trim over it. Then, if I do my math correctly, I'm gonna get the peak to line up perfectly, and I'm gonna do a one bend, one piece bend over at the peak, that way uh, there's no water penetration at that point. And then hopefully I'll go ahead and get my measurements and everything marked where that connection comes together at the valley. And hopefully be able to use a one piece trim through all of that uh, to make it look seamless and help with any water coming in you know, on the roof, which is never a good thing. hand this over to you okay I just hold it so it doesn't flop see right here it's gonna it wants to bend just kind of hold it there I'm gonna open up my trim so that it slides over the cut I already made okay so we're gonna come in it's gonna bend automatically okay now come my way how'd we do look at that mm -hmm. math never lies my dude Oh, that is true. All right, so now we've got this guy one piece, and there is going to be roof tucked underneath of this. But this right here will actually um, we'll cover that up with some more trim. We'll get some sealant in there, and then when we do our um, our ridge cap that's going to come in here. We'll also do some more sealant and tucking of that. So you'll see that in the future. But for now, this is nice and ready to go. 
one piece, I like it. All right, so what I got to figure this out and make sure it's accurate is this uh, Stabila Tech level. This is a Tech 700, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. It's gonna calibrate, and what it's doing is it's giving me zero degrees. I'm gonna unlock it, and it's already unlocked. I can pull this out to 46 point five one really I'm not gonna be able to do that I'm just gonna go to 46.5 I'll lock that in if I come off of this thing that right there is the angle I'm after I'm gonna do that same bend So this is basically gonna go like this, but the problem is I'm gonna have to cut that right at that dimension there. So hold that. This is three and a half. Okay, so that's like that, which I just don't know how else it's going to go together. That was awkward. Well, that kind of uh, finishes off this trim detail. I think it'll all come together, I hope, because, you know, we kind of, when you're doing it beforehand, you do all the math, you try to do your best to make sure everything is perfect. We snapped all of our lines. Everything kind of came together. But once we get our steel and everything where we want it, it should look really good. And now we can go ahead and install this upper steel. And once that's done, build this porch out. And that's what I'm super excited about. So let's do it. Now one of the things uh, some people had asked is, why don't you use a built-in J channel on your windows so you don't have to worry about trimming them out? And with metal, I just don't think that that works quite as well. We don't have the ability, uh, especially up on the header, to, to flash out over the metal and stop it from running right behind the wall panel. Now, even though we have a house wrap, I just think it's be best practice to run your flashings, seal them with some good sealant like OSI Quad, and do your best always then caulk the rest and don't rely on you know building a post frame like a stick frame building with sheeting and with uh like vinyl siding so it's a little bit different therefore some of the methods are a little bit different not not that you couldn't run a um pre-built j channel on your window it's just not something that I think is the right way to go. And when you're running your steel up and around your window, you're gonna find that uh, a pre-bent J is actually kind of tough because you have to get your steel into that J channel on the top and the bottom. That's easy for the first piece, but when you come on the other side of the window and have to uh, get it lapped on the piece you just put up that's where it becomes a little tough and that is why we always leave our top J channel off until our steel is up and then we tuck the J channel and I'll try to show you that so at this point the water that can come in here is going to be able to come down the window and it's going to be able to work its way back in so what we do is I run a little bit of a longer bead of sealant with this sealant here my hope is um, there's just a slightest of a lip here and I'm gonna put this J channel up I'm gonna push it into that bead of caulk and push it up nice and tight now what that's doing is it's creating just the slightest of pitch on the top of this trim so that any water that gets here First off, if it does go in, it's gonna hit that bead of sealant and it's gonna stop. You see that I ran my sealant long over here, um, and then I'm gonna do another joint for my sides, and then it'll kind of complete it. 
allowing any water that gets behind here on the connection to come down and then work its way out. That's the goal. Now these were actually mistake pieces from, uh, from another window that I made, so luckily they're gonna work out just fine right here. Another nice bead, and then you see right here, I'm gonna fill this in to prevent any water from going in and coming back this way and any water coming down here. It's gonna hit this and it's gonna, it's gonna get pushed out. There's a hem on the back side of this trim that I'm locking into the bottom piece, that way it can't go anywhere. The main goal now is just to bust out this upper steel above the porch, because I really want to get going on the framing, and I think that's probably what you guys came here to see is this porch get built. All of these ribs for us are nine inches apart. Every panel is three foot apart. So you've always got a reference point to measure back to. So when like, let's say getting this piece of steel measured, this rib right here, I know uh, it's gonna be nine inches to the next rib. It's gonna be 18 inches to the rib after that. It's gonna be three foot from the edge of the panel. So when you're making your measurements, we always say from center of good rib, which the good rib is the one that laps over the siphon rib from the previous panel. So we'll always measure from the center over, which is where I came up with my five and three eighths measurement. I was actually five and five eighths, sorry. But uh, hopefully that makes sense. It gives us a nice reference point. <laughs> I was just waiting for it. That's the motivation you needed. <laughs> That's right. You ain't coming up here and helping me. Right coming. I got it. I don't want to leave me again. <laughs> Okay, hit my mark. Booyah, Grandma. Make sure I like it. And I need, dang, dude. I mean, how could it be so perfect, Greg? Well, yeah, that's a rhetorical question. All right, guys, had a lot of questions about, and I'm constantly asked, how do you get your top J channel and how do you make that waterproof so that water doesn't go in? Now, if you look right over here, this is the most important part. Do you see how my side steel is ran up past the top of the window? Now, what I see all the time, and I'm assuming a lot of times it's from guys that probably have done residential in their day and they haven't done a whole lot of metal work, they will cut this piece of steel up and over the window in just a 90 degree. This little bit of an overcut is so important and I'll show you why. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get our measurement from this point here all the way to the point way over here. And what I do, I just take my piece of trim and I turn it over and I shove it tight to the left then I will mark exactly on the right where that is. Instead of pulling out a tape measure, that takes time and it can be a lot more inconsistent than just actually putting your piece of trim in. Now this is the important part. I'm gonna come in from this side. I'm gonna stick it this way, which means this side's gonna be a little bit tricky. We take this corner off, just round it over a little bit, and then I find my joint. This is my joint between two panels. I'll stick this up there and I'll start sliding it over. Get it over as far as you can go. Sometimes you can just get it in there with your hand. You gotta be careful so you don't get cut. I just kind of work it up there. And that's it. But did you see that right here? So you can see now I have my steel up 
but I'm gonna take this J channel, which is nice and tight, and I'm gonna go over it. Now all the water that comes down into that J channel is gonna run out here and it's gonna go over the steel. It's not gonna get right into this corner where I see a lot of guys will 45 this piece of trim. Um, yeah, it might look good, 45s are great, but this helps you stay watertight. And now we'll run some screws here to keep this nice and tight. And water's gonna hit the top of this J channel and be gone. So hopefully that makes sense to somebody and hopefully it helps somebody. Uh, make sure you, like always, can drop some comments down below. Ask me questions if you want them and uh, I'll do my best to answer them always. So hopefully that helped you guys.